it is my pleasure to introduce George Conradis, who is our keynote speaker this morning. George is here this morning to share with us his view of competing in the 90s, the information edge. Please join with me in welcoming George Conradis. Thank you, Roger. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are members of one of the top user groups in the world, and we're all here to share and to learn over the next few days. So let's give each other a big round of applause. What do you say? I'm delighted to be your keynote speaker, honored, in fact, and especially pleased because, as you know, this is your 30th anniversary, commemorating three decades of partnership between Common and IBM. It's a partnership that becomes ever more critical to IBM as we work so hard to become much more market-driven, much more customer-driven. So let me start with a heartfelt thank you. You know, your enthusiasm and your support for the System 3X and now the AS400 have made these among IBM's most successful offerings. We appreciate your help, and we thank you very much for your business. This weekend, I was working on this speech, and I uh, mentioned to our 12-year-old daughter, Emmy, that I was going to give a talk about competition in a coliseum where they had just held the Tough Man contest for local kickboxers. And that I would be in the very place where Jeff, the destroyer Lynn, squared off with psycho Mike Miller. And she said to me, so who are you, the wingtip wonder? <laughs> you better take mom with you. <laughs> well, she's probably right. I would need somebody to keep me out of trouble. And that is a way to uh, bring me to what I want to talk about today. Not just competition, but how companies will use information technology, intelligence, data, to give themselves a market edge and stay out of trouble. You know all about today's global cutthroat competition. Your companies, my company, we're all really in the same boat. We must be the low-cost producer and offer the most value for the money. We must also improve quality, reduce defects, empower every employee to take creative and corrective action, and do all of that while improving our response time to meeting each customer's unique needs. Now, that's a tall order, whether we're in business or in the public sector, in education or research. So what are we doing about it? Well, companies around the world are changing the way that they do business. And it's not just a matter of choice, it's a matter of survival. And in response, many of you are re-engineering your business processes, redefining work to become even more responsive to your customers. You're creating multidisciplined work groups and transforming people into knowledge workers, giving them the information they need when they need it to realize their full potential. What all of us are really doing, of course, is increasing our dependency on information systems. As you all know, that places new demands on you, the IS professionals, and on us, your supplier. Look at departments and work groups. We're seeing an explosion in local area networks and client server computing as our workforces demand more power and access to information at the desktop. That's one reason companies are developing an information infrastructure to tie together the basic facilities for the management, the communication, the access to information on which an organization depends. Everything from PCs, phones, faxes, and local area networks to global networks of mainframes, mid-range computers, even supercomputers. Developing an enterprise information infrastructure is the competitive requirement the critical success factor for the 90s. It calls for systems integration on a massive scale where diverse hardware, software, and applications must work together to solve your business problems. 
Now we think to be an effective, an information infrastructure must address at least four customer environments. Often you can find them coexisting, sometimes uneasily, in the enterprise today. Each responds to a specific customer need, and actually you know about them as well as I do. The first supports personal productivity on a programmable workstation, whether it's a PC, a PS2, or a Macintosh. Close to 70% of these PCs are still running personal uh, productivity or special purpose applications unlinked to any database or network. The second environment supports work group productivity on a local area network. It's growing fast, about 30% annually, because you're finding that client server computing is, the, is a very cost-effective way of improving work group productivity. Then there's the host environment supporting the productivity of an organization or function, such as accounting or order processing. This environment consists of terminals or workstations attached to a mid-range or mainframe computer, sometimes including cooperative processing along the client-server model. Fourth, the enterprise environment supports the productivity of the entire enterprise, with multiple LANs and hosts linked to each other and again on the client-server model. These enterprise LANs allow people to share applications and data in a distributed computing environment or leverage the power of a host through cooperative processing. They're expected to grow as fast or faster than the workgroup environment over the next few years, accommodating systems and software from multiple vendors and linking sites around the globe. Now, I want you to know that we in IBM are committed to supporting you in all four of these areas. In fact, in the last 10 months, we've announced an unprecedented breadth of products and services designed to help you build your IS infrastructure for the 90s. In many ways, they are not IBM's announcements, they are your announcements. Each bears your indelible stamp the many detailed requirements that you've given us, not only common, but also guide and share. Together, your 14,000 members worldwide represent some of our most discriminating and valued customers. Let's start with last month's introduction of the System 390, one of the most comprehensive announcements we've ever made. As you know, System 390 is an all-new family of processors, offering a broad array of function and price performance, from a departmental office system to a six-way multiprocessor at the top of the line. But it's also a family of compatible operating systems with a wealth of new features and functions that respond to the needs that you articulate for flexibility in configuring your system, enterprise-wide security, better systems management, seamless growth paths, and access to innovation such as image and knowledge-based systems. Requirements like these are important to a company like Boeing as they build their information infrastructure for the 90s. At Boeing, they're committed to the paperless design of their next gener generation of aircraft now under development. Before a single part is manufactured, the new aircraft will be modeled, it'll be verified and tested on a complex of our largest mainframes linked to a work group of design engineers along with manufacturing, marketing, and service, all using our high-performance workstations and PS2s. Here's how Art Hitzman of Boeing Computer Services describes the advantages that they expect to get from their information infrastructure. Well, we think that the 3D modeling process is uh, vital to what we're trying to do in a new airplane uh, project, and that's where we're introducing it, to be able to provide a digital data set to everybody that's going to use it downstream of engineering, including manufacturing and tooling and materiel and other organizations. The ES-9000 system is going to allow us to utilize the results of the 3D modeling system uh, that we want to be used by a large number of people at the same time handling a very large amount of data. Well, that's the high end, but I know that most of you are interested in the AS400. 
Common also has had a very positive impact on the exciting developments in our AS400 family. In fact, in two announcements this year, February and August, we significantly enhanced the AS400 family to meet your needs. Today, three new low-end models and more memory and storage at the high end of the line make the AS400 a full-range family of computers with a seven-fold spread in processor performance. And we plan to more than double that by the middle of next year. That means you can start off by investing in, in a PC-sized system that costs no more than a small delivery van, and as your needs grow, upgrade all the way to an 18-wheeler that's as powerful as a mainframe. The rich AS400 application portfolio contains some 8,000 applications. That's the largest in the industry. And the new release 3 of OS 400 is unmatched in its ease of use and in its high level of integration so that you can concentrate on running your businesses, not your computers. Let's take a look at how one successful company is managing its day-to-day -day operations. Every day around the world, store managers for Mrs. Fields Cookies begin the day by consulting an expert system a totally integrated management tool that frees up store managers from paperwork, allowing them to better serve their customers. The expert system is multifaceted, fine-tuning production of perishable foods based on past performance. It also schedules labor, functions as a computer-aided instructor and interviewer, an electronic mail system, and through computerized job analysis, it optimizes the effectiveness of individual employees. Mrs. Fields Cookies has 500 stores today with plans to double its business over the next five years. Thanks to the expert system, the headquarters staff can keep close tabs on day-to-day -day business operations and do that six times as efficiently as their competitors. According to Chairman Randy Fields, it's like having a consultant in a box. Now, in fact, some 60% of UAS 400 customers are using your systems as the ideal repository for your business applications. And many of you are integrating emerging technologies like image and fax and telephony and electronic data interchange, or EDI. Some of you are extending your company's reach worldwide by hooking up to IBM's information network with its EDI links and its mail exchange offering. Let's turn now to the RISC System 6000. Earlier this year, we introduced a new family of advanced workstations and servers for the Unix and the technical marketplace. And today, I have a special announcement for you. Two new additions to the family, the Power Station 550 and the Power Server 550, and you are hearing about them one day before the rest of the world. And let me tell you, <laughs> these babies are real screamers. They're benchmarked at 56 MIPS and 23 megaflops, our most powerful workstations ever. And the price per megaflop is so affordable, we, are, we should be calling it our paperback edition of a supercomputer. Now, we targeted the technical marketplace first for the risk system family because we learned the hard way that credibility with the power users is key to being a player in the Unix world. And a player we are. From the start, we offered our customers an order of magnitude improvement in price performance, and the Model 550 continues the drumbeat. We think that the RISC System 6000 is ideal as a standalone workstation for engineering and scientific computing, high resolution graphics, and other numeric intensive applications. And it's also a powerful server to entire departments of designers or financial modelers. These extraordinary images that you see are the results of millions of mathematical calculations per second, as well as examples of leading industry software that are just a few of the more than 1,500 key applications that will be ported to the RISC System 6000 by the end of this year. Now, this advanced workstation is also catching on as a multi-user system in commercial environments, wherever there are Unix applications that support your needs. 
In fact, the commercial Unix environment is almost as large as the technical one, with applications that range from phone and newspaper operations to insurance to retail management. So we're going after the commercial opportunity as well. In optimizing your investments in solutions and training, however, many of you don't want to have to choose between a Unix solution and, say, an AS400. You want an information infrastructure that can mix and match both. And that's why we're providing interoperability between our Unix environment, AIX, and SAA, our systems application architecture. For example, with the new RISC System 6000 connection program for the AS400, you can process your numeric intensive applications on the RS6000 while integrating data stored on an AS400 elsewhere in your network. Again, whether you use the RS6000 for technical or for commercial Unix applications, alone or as, as part of an enterprise network, the important thing is, to us is that you have the right solution to meet your particular needs. Now, as you build your enterprise system, what will be your window on the information infrastructure? For most of you, it's the desktop workstation. And I'm proud to make another special announcement today, major new additions to our PS2 family. Ladies and gentlemen, the new PS2 models 90 and 95. Model 95 is a powerful server. The Model 95 is a powerful server for the OS2 LAN environment that unlocks the power of the Intel 486 processor. The PS2 Model 90 is our new desktop 486 workstation. Both of them come with extended graphics array, XGA, our new standard for high-resolution graphics, as well as new, faster hard disk drives, an optional memory cache for higher performance, and a new 2.3 gigabyte tape drive for backup. Talk about expandability, you can now get up to 9 gigabytes of hard disk storage. Both the Model 90 and the 95 are ideal for power applications like financial modeling, advanced desktop publishing, and multimedia. We're also announcing today new releases of LAN server and of OS2. Our new standard edition cuts the memory, memory requirement for running OS2 to just two megabytes. That means, that means in a LAN environment, programs may now be loaded two to three times faster than before, including improved performance when memory is constrained. Together with our range of existing PS products, we think these announcements put us in a strong position for leadership in the emerging client-server marketplace. Most important, the 90s. And we've had more than 500 announcements this year. That's more than two per working day, with much, much more to come. What gives an infrastructure its reach and its range is the ability to connect these systems and services together and integrate them productively with other vendors' products. On that score, I hope you've noticed that there's really a new spirit in IBM, and that's a dedication to openness in meeting your needs. Now, openness, of course, is a very popular word these days, and I'd like to make sure that our definition is crystal clear. For us, openness is not synonymous with a particular vendor or even with Unix. Openness really begins with an attitude. It's a willingness to create solutions that meet your business needs, regardless of the specific computing environment. According to the IEEE's definition, an open systems environment supports a consistent set of international technology and functional standards to accomplish interoperability and portability of applications, data, and people. The key word is standards. Adherence to standards does not mean sinking to the lowest common denominator. In IBM, you can count on us to add value while conforming to standards. And where standards don't exist, we may have to develop a proprietary solution, then open it up to others in the marketplace once we've recouped our original investment. You've seen us move aggressively to incorporate standards and to embrace open systems. 
Make no mistake, we intend to be the open systems vendor of choice in the industry, a leader in both standards compliance as well as in investments in developing new standards. That's the only way to be the best at responding to your needs and also differentiating ourselves in a multi-vendor marketplace. That's what you tell us you want, and that's why it's good business for IBM. Now, I've talked about the information infrastructure today, and I've talked about the need for openness. And now I'd like to close my remarks with a little demonstration, a demonstration for the benefits of any business your business can gain by building an effective IS infrastructure. Because if you think that that is challenging today, it's only going to increase in the 90s. For one thing, the forms of information are expanding. The business of the future will need to access not just today's text and graphics files, but a full spectrum of multimedia objects, including compact disc quality audio and VHS quality full motion video. But most important of all is the need to find new ways to share and to use this information. Now, to give you an idea of how we want to help you empower your employees, I want to give you a sneak preview of something that IBM scientists are working on. It's an advanced groupware system tapping into the enormous power of OS2. Using the full range of multimedia objects, anyone in the group can launch a computer-based discussion that others can contribute to at will. Users don't have to know who's in the group, where they're located, or how to get the information to them. Now, you've seen a lot of multimedia uh, demos. Most of them stand alone. But this time, we want you to see groupware at work in the office. We call it magic paper. Now, this is Jack Williford. Now, let's say that Jack is my vice president of marketing. And for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, he's working at his office in New York. Over here is David Reich, who has responsibility, let's say, for all of IBM's advertising, and who's up very early this morning at his office in Los Angeles. And let's pretend for the purposes of this demonstration that I'm getting some work done right here in Cincinnati at our branch office. Now, as we all do, I want to keep in touch with the business right here on the road. Let's see how Magic Paper can help me get through my list of to-dos in this office of the future. Well, first of all, I want to check uh, my favorite CNN program for the latest business news. This Magic is Paper, business I can day. access multiple Would video feeds and in Windows on my PS2. Think of it. On every desktop in your enterprise, you could have CNN or any video information source, say, in-house company news or training, even The Simpsons. Now I'll close my video window. Next on my list of to-dos is a teleconference call. Now I've attached a camera to my workstation, and one of the things that I can do is record meetings that are held in my conference room that might be helpful to others in the group. It allows them to hear the various views and importantly, listen to the debates at a later time. But today, let's have a little fun. Let's have a real-time teleconference. Let me just set this up here. Now that's what I like, a group that comes prepared. <laughs> now let's get your president, Roger Peck, on this telecall for some up close and personal communications between Common and IBM. Hello, Roger, how are you? Fine, what's up, George? Well, I got your letter, you know, the one that uh, lists Common's top concerns. Well, they're very important to us, especially that fourth one, the last one. Yeah, that's why I'm calling, Roger. It says, uh, whatever the customer wants, just say yes. Well, is that a problem? Well, I'll tell you, Roger, we're going to need a little more time to work on that, but I do have my staff uh, hard at work on, on, on that challenge. Okay, well, be sure to keep us posted, please. I will, will do, Roger, and I'll get back to you soon. Okay, we close out the teleconference. 
Now, as I said earlier, the real beauty of magic paper is that one person can launch a computer-based discussion that others can contribute to when it's most convenient for them. Back in New York, Jack is preparing a magic paper document. Now, he's starting an electronic conference among the people in our marketing division whose job it is to respond to your letter and your concerns. Using something we call a work pad as a display, Jack has already started a note regarding Commons' top concerns. The work pad has a paper-like interface that allows him to inter interact naturally with this digital medium as easily as with a piece of paper. Let's eavesdrop for a moment. Let's see. Commons' top concerns. Attached is a letter from Common listing their top concerns. Please indicate which of their concerns your area is addressing and let us all know. Well, now Jack decides to add a phrase uh, to his original note, urging immediate attention to Common's concerns. The system has been taught to recognize gestures, and in this case, an insert carrot. Jack indicates where he wants to place the new phrase. Notice how as he writes the phrase as soon as possible, the WorkPad software interprets the handwritten characters and turns them into printed text. Now Jack's going to attach the letter from Common to his original note. Now first Jack scans the letter from Common into the system, converting it into digital information. Now he turns on the sketch mode so he can also annotate on Common's letter before making the entire document available to the group for their input. Let's see, Common's top concerns, any to any connectivity. Openness is key to our strategy, too. IS productivity tools. That's also a hot item for us. Network management. We're together here, too. A requirement that's going to grow in the 90s. Just say yes to the customer. Now, there's a real challenge for our marketing force. Now, Jack seems to think that this last item needs special attention, so he's attaching a voice message to make his point. Folks, I circled item number four. We really have to nail this one. Please get back to me. Folks, I circled item number four. We really have to nail this one. Please get back to me. Well, as you can see, just about any kind of information can be included in magic paper. Now all Jack has to do is click on the File button to launch the entire document, text, image, and voice, out over the network. Now let me emphasize that groupware is not like electronic mail where the sender decides who should see the information by virtue of the distribution list. Rather, members of the network with similar responsibilities and interests, whether inside or even outside the organization, acquire the information they need at the level appropriate to their needs, from priority action to information only. In the discussion that Jack just launched, those authorized to participate can contribute without the need for face-to-face -face contact. Issues are floated electronically throughout the organization tapping the best ideas that are available, and Magic Paper's ability to support the full range of multimedia objects will make it even easier for everyone to participate in network teleconferencing. Now, while Jack continues to work in his office, let's see what David is up to. David, our director of advertising, is about to be involved in another Magic Paper discussion. Now, as you might expect, He's interested in many different ways of presenting information and wants to review his libraries. Now, David selects multimedia samples to browse the list of entries. David's library could be stored locally or on a multi-gigabyte optical jukebox somewhere else in the network. The beauty of Magic Paper is that you can call up any of these objects virtually instantly for review or transmission over the network. Now, in this case, David decides to review a three-dimensional image that one of our research laboratories has submitted for general information. David has an interesting submission there, one that he can manipulate in 3D space with his mouse. 
And while he doesn't need it now, submissions like these give David pretty good ideas on how to make future promotions come alive. It's also a good illustration of the prospects and potential multimedia can provide. Now David now switches into his magic paper inbound window. He notices another object labeled multimedia commercial has just arrived from the advertising agency. And the agency needs David's approval before sending the latest version of the commercial out to air. And as these slides dramatically illustrate, annual net profits are... Instead of presenting information in a way that just sits there, now you can make it come alive. An IBM PS2 with Micro Channel can add full motion video and stereo sound to text and graphics. So from classrooms to boardrooms, anything you create can be a multimedia experience that's truly moving. To get more impact, how are you going to do it? PS2. Now there's a guy who gets a real rise out of his job, isn't it? <laughs> Through Magic Paper, David and his staff are linked to the advertising agencies that create our ads and to the television stations that broadcast them. As a result, an approval process that might have taken days can be reduced to seconds. And no more need to send videotapes all around the country. Talk about rapid response time. You know, we in IBM United States are always interested in what our counterparts are doing around the corporation. So David belongs to a conference that links him with IBM sites worldwide. And his inbound window contains a new French commercial that has been just made available for general information. Écoutez, on en a déjà parlé 100 fois. Un IBM, c'est tout. IBM, c'est tout. Well, that's great. Let's dedicate that one to the International User Group Council who are with us here today. Now, what's really exciting about all, all this is that as the world moves to fiber optic long lines, transmitting the whole range of multimedia objects overseas will become business as usual. And speaking of business as usual, I haven't checked my inbound window here in uh, Cincinnati today. Let's see here. Aha, I see I've received Commons top concerns. Ah, yes, and here from Jack, you see the message, uh, returning message on the information regarding Commons top concerns. And if I wanted to be reminded of the uh, reference of Roger Peck's comments. Hello, Roger. How are you? Fine. What's up, George? Well, I got your letter. You know, the one that uh, lists Commons' top concerns. Well, they're very important to us, especially that fourth one, the last one. Yeah, that's why I'm calling, Roger. It says, uh, whatever the customer wants, just say yes. Well, is that a problem? Well, I'll tell you, Roger, we're going to need a little more time to work on that, but I do have my staff uh, hard at work on, on, on that challenge. Okay, well, be sure to keep us posted, please. I will, will do, Roger, and I'll get back to you soon. Well, that's a pretty effective way for everybody to understand exactly what the issues uh, are. Let, let's close out the file here. Now, I see Jack has also included here an audio uh, message. So we'll see what Jack has to add to this uh, response. We've polled marketing teams around the country about just saying yes to our customers. Each team sent in their own response, and I've merged them all together here. Okay, now I know these teams around the country have been working very uh, hard on this, so let's take a look at uh, their response. Just say yes, making your business too. Just say yes, making your business too. Just say yes, making your business too. Just say yes now, baby. 
I'll bet that's not the IBM you thought you knew. <laughs> Well, I'm delighted to have had the opportunity this morning to share with you some of the exciting things that we're doing with multimedia, and in particular, Magic Paper. By the way, the demo that you just saw was produced and presented using PS2s and our multimedia technology. In fact, our technology was used throughout the entire presentation today. So in the spirit of openness, I thought I'd share with you how this demonstration was constructed. Magic Paper is a set of applications and services that's an adaptation of our IBM Group Talk product. Our three office workstations here are Model 80s running OS2 Extended Edition, linked by a token ring LAN running TCP IP. The video capability is made possible by our M Motion Video Adapter A card and the audio by our Audio Capture Playback card. The entire program was written in C and Rex using Presentation Manager. The WorkPad is an experimental tablet using algorithms developed by IBM Research. Now at the outset of this demo, I said it was an advanced groupware system from our research laboratory, but it was not created in a vacuum. Many customers and other IBM divisions have provided input uh, into this magic paper system. And as our researchers like to tell me, we're not too far from handing it over to development. So while it's not quite a product yet, it's all real hardware and all real software. But I have to confess, one thing was not real. Jack Williford over here is not our vice president of marketing. And David Reich over here doesn't head up advertising. In real life, they're both part of the IBM research team that's developing Magic Paper. Let's give them a big hand. Well, you all have been a terrific audience this morning. I began by saying that we'd be talking about competition today, but we've ended up talking about cooperation, sharing over a network of magic paper. The fact is, as we enter the 1990s, both are going to be critical. The cooperation that Common stands for so well, and the competitive edge that information systems can bring. I hope I've convinced you this morning that IBM is listening, that we're serious about openness and your networking and client server requirements, and that multimedia, once it's out of the laboratory and into the office, is not only going to be a tremendous productivity boost, but it's also going to be a, a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming. You have been a terrific audience. I hope you have a wonderful round of sessions at this common conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you have to admit, this has been one of the best keynote sessions we've ever had in our 30 years. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to take a little bit of a chance here. But we saw up here, bigger than life, just say yes. <laughs> and I see back there some video cameras. Right. And this demonstration, I don't think, has really sunk into these people. And above all, I think they would like to take a copy of this home so that their executives can take a copy of, take a view of this. So what I want is the common and IBM partnership to distribute a copy of this presentation to all of our members. <laughs> Take it home or send it to them. Um, I think we can send it to them. Can we work together on that? We can send it to them. I'll just say yes. Thank you. Yeah.